Rose. Excitement. Adventure. True adventure awaits you within these collected stories of daring do. From impossible feats in foreign lands to sinister portals to other worlds. These stories are steeped in the tradition of the adventure stories of old. Three volumes. Thirty stories. Twenty-five authors. One epic series. Adventure awaits. Volume one is out now. Volumes two and three coming soon. Adventure awaits. From Breaking Rules Publishing Europe. Greetings, folks. My name is Tim Mendes. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, tonight is a very special live launch event. And if you didn't guess by that uh, <laughs> overly dramatic trailer that I made, uh, tonight it is for not just the, the book Adventure Awaits Volume 1, but the series as a whole. But we will generally be focusing on Volume 1 this evening. Yeah, so tonight, like I say, I have four guests and we will be talking about this lovely, lovely book here. Uh, I have an octopus and a cowboy hat. I've got my beer. I'm set. So <clears throat> uh, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the notification button and hit subscribe. If you're watching it on Facebook on my channel, hit like or whatever you do on Facebook. Um, yeah. And <clears throat> we will have a, a Q&A with the audience in a bit. So if you have questions... Get them down in the comments section, and we will. I will basically put them to the panel. So, without further ado, let me bring on my first guest. Uh, it's going to be one of those not him again moments. It's me old mucker, Mister David Green. Oh, Hello, not, mate. Not him again. Not him not again. Him again. Um, hi, how's it going? Yeah, good. I love that. I love that trailer, by the way. It was great. I, I really like your uh, your um, trailer voice. Oh, it's, it's great. Fantastic. Oh, oh, come on, man. I mean, look at these. Look at that, right? You it's can't great, have by me just talking normally over it, could you really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Adventures of Daring Do. <laughs> it's going to be Daring Do. do. <laughs> yeah. That no, was good. I liked it a lot. It was really, really good. And, uh, <laughs> I can't, and, and you were the, not anyone, not many people know, but you were the hand model for all of the trailer as well. Your hands look great. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a different colour nail polish. <laughs> yeah, that's right. that's right. Where did you get the gun from? Oh, the gun? Oh, it belongs to one of my octopus friends. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. Very, very Don't good. ask. Don't ask. Yeah. So... You're here representing um, Breaking Rules Europe. I am. This evening. Yeah. Am. You are the, the editor person. of this whole volume. I'm the editor of this volume. Uh, the person who who uh, is at Breaking Rules, who actually has a story in this one, uh, didn't bother to turn up. So mm. <laughs> said he couldn't make it. So um, I'm here instead for, for him. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Have a nice evening. <laughs> so what where did this where did the idea for this come from was it like a love because obviously with the i've got some uh, things i could show the covers in a minute i'll do that in a minute um but obviously with these these very like old pulp style isn't it yeah so, is that yeah yeah well to be honest with you um the um the idea of the covers was was all uh chris holtman actually it was always, it was his idea to do it and his sister did the um the artwork that would be amanda jan's daughter bissett that's right that's correct yes, you're, very, you're very well prepared as, as always I am. I am. this, this program has got a lot more slick since it started <laughs> right? 
hasn't it? <laughs> now, you used to hold up little bits of uh, the back of Amazon packages with scribbles on it. Now you've got everything prepared. You got. Trails. I still do that on my After Hours series. That's no frills. Mm, all right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like yeah. That. yeah. So like the covers were, um, uh, we we kind of wanted to do like a, a, a kind of a pulpy kind of thing, and then uh, he went away, designed it, um, sister did the artwork for the three the three volumes, and um, but I, I, originally it was just going to be one volume. So um, she did yeah. um, she did the two variations, and then um, to kind of us to pick which one we liked the best. Um, but then we decided then as we get three. Yeah, yeah, it's like two, three. But just because, like, obviously, with the, with the kind of style, that kind of pulpy style as well, it always came in like volumes and what have you. But then as well, yeah. we we're getting, we we're getting such uh, great stories in, and it was kind of a. We, we were very keen, like, obviously, we're, we're, we're quite new. Um, the, the, the breaking rules Europe is, you know, only starting in January, but we we're quite keen to kind of yeah. to pay people as soon as we could. So for this one, we were going to do royalty payments and. Um, we were getting such great stories in there, we, but we wanted to limit it around 10 stories because we wanted to give people good royalties back. Yeah. Uh, so, um, but that meant we would have been rejecting a bunch of stuff that was that was really, really good. So we just kind of looked at it and we're like, well, there's three of us that work um, at the publisher. And so it's myself, Chris, Mary Holtman, and uh, Derek Power. And so we're like, well, you know what, we'll, we'll each edit uh, yeah, I've noticed now on the covers because Hultman's got volume two, hasn't he? And then Derek's yeah. doing volume three. Volume three. So we, each of us have got a story in each one as well, but we're we're not getting like we're not part of the royalty part or anything. We just wanted to put stories in because it's it's a it's like a kind of uh, genre that we like, uh, and that's the reason why we wanted to do it when we set up. We wanted to do kind of more unusual things. We don't really you don't really see like calls for adventure stories and like we you know, don't like, anymore no i mean like mm. the, well this is what i love about these covers it, these are the like the kind of thing that i read as a kid you yeah know, with cowboys on the front of it and yeah, yeah. the only difference is right you're breaking rules of europe so why have you got uh, american you money on the well you know holtman's like holtman's american isn't he so he's, he's very uh like american swede so he's very he's, he's very uh, D. And, and the thing is, though, well, actually, 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 you say Europe, most of Europe uses cents, all right? Not then, they're not back when this sort of thing was made in bloody dinner. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's um, very good. Yeah, that's a good point. I will shut up, my point, right? You're, you're the love, you're the lovelight out of Europe, you know, you're the one, yeah, all right, yeah. All right. <laughs> um, well, yeah, so that, that was it. So, we kind of, um, you know, we, 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 um, so we wanted to include, uh, because we got, we got it was really, really. A strong response actually because I think you know people grow up with like we were just talking off there like Jurassic Park their adventure movies Indiana Jones yeah. um, you know we go a bit older the Three Musketeers like and you look at cartoons that you used to watch as a kid like stories like you used to uh, read like you know Blyton uh, Biggins uh, all this kind of stuff and um, so it was something that I think people like had a story and a lot of people submitted uh, multiple stories for it as well um, because I think it was just people had that had stories inside them that they were like, oh, I've wanted to do this for a long time, but could never find a place to do it. So we didn't want to discourage people and, and, and reject a bunch of really good stories. So we're like, you know, what's well, extra work, but let's do it. Let's do the three volumes. And um, uh, yeah. it means that everyone can get like a, a better share of the royalty pot for any sales that we get. And um, yeah, that, that was, that was the, that was the reasoning really. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, the thing is, it's like um, you said you were going to do two volumes when you decided. Does that I was like? Does that mean I can write another one? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's yeah. I think that's what I think. We said we'll do two, and then like every, like loads of people were like, oh, I had a second idea that I didn't. I, did, I started working on it, and then yeah. I said it too. So it's like we just basically like it. it, it double the amount of um, subs that we had in like by the end and then obviously like the last kind of week we're just just getting like so many subs in the last week where people have been like kind of working up to the up to the limit um, but no it's good I'm, I'm really pleased with how they turned up and um some of the some of the titles in the book as well i, I was really just um oh, yeah, no, i know it's in volume names. two is it uh, emma ledley's that the, the good ship scooby <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's, there's a few great ones in, in volume one. Uh, yeah. two, uh, you know, there's so many of them. You can't really pick it. You can't really uh, single any out. Um, but uh, yeah, there's some great titles, and that's the great thing about this kind of genre of adventure. It's like you can be as silly as you want to, really. Like yeah. you know, you don't, have, you don't want to. You don't have to be too serious. Um, well, that's my my second one. I had to get the word dastardly in there. 
Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and some other word that you had to get yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It makes me chuckle. It does. I, I love it. I, I it made uh, it made my cold, withered heart beat an extra bit, a little bit faster for for a few seconds. <laughs> I always like that when you get edits back and there's a laugh out loud in the comments. <laughs> it's <just> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's a quote. We've got a comment from Ella Ann already. Uh, was there a debate over whether the battered look should be printed on the cover or whether you should just beat the shit out of the books before shipping? Yeah. Well, that would have been fun. Um, I'd love to go to Amazon's printing place and beat the crap out of some of them, let alone the books. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, yeah. Um, uh, you know, do you remember when you were in school and you used to have to, like, aid, like, you, had, you used to have to make maps at school? And, like, and you had to get a tea bag on it and then, like, put it in, and then you put it in, the, and you put it in the oven. You put it in the oven for a few minutes. A bit, yeah, a bit. yeah, or, on, or, or do the edge with a match. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what Amazon did. <laughs> they were just like that's why that's why they're, that's why they're being such like dicks about saying I mean, that's why they're taking so long. Yeah. <laughs> like, we have to age every single cover that we've got here. All right, so guy out there with a the team man going, hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So you do have a story. It's in the third one. Yeah. Yeah. There will, there will be a story for me in the third one, but uh, to say that I have a story. Is a gross exaggeration <laughs> at, the, at the at the present time. I bloody love it. <laughs> hmm, apparently. <laughs> yeah. All right, matey. Cool. Uh, I'll bring you back on in a bit. I'll. Uh, yep. Cheers for that. Okay. Uh, next guest is up bright and early this morning. Uh, so if you see matchsticks holding her eyes open, don't worry about it. It's, it's you know, she can rock that look. She can rock it. All the way from Australia, it's my friend, Neen Cohen. Hello, Neen. He's snorting hey, coffee. Hey, morning. So this is, this is my matchsticks. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, just, I love that octopus. Yeah, I've oh, got the no. mugs. I've got the mugs. I've got one of the purple ones and one of the blue ones. Yeah. It's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How are you doing? Good, good. It's um just after six a.m. here, so my throat's a bit um warming up still. Yeah, but we're all good. <laughs> Maybe it's your birthday yesterday, wasn't it? So happy birthday! Yes, yeah. yes. Well, technically for you, it's still my birthday. It's still your, it's apparently. your birthday now for us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Time travel, man. Time travel is real. <laughs> it's called me the doctor. Hey, I like it. I like it. Who was your favourite? DT, David Tennant. Oh. Yeah, the old ones, dude. I don't remember them. All oh, right. <laughs> How did you know I was going to say? <laughs> I, I could tell by the look in your eye. You're like, come on, man. Where's the baker? Where's, come on. Oh, Pat Troughton, man, myself. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't really Hobart. remember them. Yeah. And I cannot go back and watch them. I've tried to go back and watch the really? old ones. And they're just, they're just, I think it's more of a nostalgic thing that keeps them kick ass. But because I don't remember them, I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> so, I love that. <laughs> That's why I like them. The what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Excellent. Yeah, so your story in this, what's it called? Uh, not camping. Not camping. Nice. Yeah, I know. It's it's not the most creative. I'm, I'm terrible with titles, but um, it was just It doesn't like... have to be fancy. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't have to be fancy, does it? I mean, that gets it across. Not camping. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> foreboding, you know? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Excellent. Yeah, so, uh, so when you when you saw the when you, when you saw it came, come up, the 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 submission what did you did you have that idea right away or i sort of did i kind of wanted like um when the call came up i was actually i was really excited like the whole adventure thing it's so kick-ass i'm such an indies fan like indiana jones is just the bomb. Yeah. and um i was like yep i can totally do this totally do indiana this. jones the octopus <laughs> I love it. 
So, um, no, I absolutely, I absolutely loved the call out. And I'd recently gone on a writing retreat with um, a couple of fellow writers. Oh, and right. I, and we went out to, um, went up the mountains and cool heaps of forest and bushwalk around and it was beautiful. And I went, oh, this is perfect. This is where I'm setting it. And that never changed. It basically was nice set the 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 adventure is sort of set there um it also comes in like it's very australian setting which i love because there's not a lot of it around um no i mean it is a lot of it is sort of like utah and yes. places in america isn't it it's all like yes you yes know, it's and, so you know. americanized so yeah i i love being able to write about you know australia Everyone underestimates it a little bit for that kind of supernatural, oh, speculative yeah. fiction stuff. And um, so I'm having lots of fun delving into the whole, yeah, Australia's just, she's just down there. Don't go about your business. We'll just be spooky down here on our own. Yeah, well, any country <laughs> that has that many spiders and snakes and things that want to kill you is going to have a bit of, going to understand about horror just a little bit. Saying that one of my current right. favorite, um, current favorite cosmic horror writers is an Australian guy. He does a very Australian take on it. David Conyers. Excellent. Yeah, I'll yeah, he, yeah. He does very, very sort of. So it's all like Cthulhu in the outback and stuff. It's like it's really cool. Because <laughs> again, it's just different, isn't it? You know, it's yeah, just, exactly, it's not, it's exactly. not Massachusetts. It's <laughs> sort of different. Yeah, yeah. Right. Are you going to give us a little bit of a, a um, snippet? Yeah, sure. Should I just do a little bit from the start or shall I do yeah. it when the – yeah, okay. Well, well, whatever you think. I mean, just, you know, just avoid <laughs> spoilers and you're good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why I'm like, no, I can't do it there. I, I can't do it. I'll just do the start. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing for the same reason. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's just like – I do that all the time with these. It's just, I'll just read the first couple of pages because if I go any further – uh, I'll just blow my wad before anybody even reads it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Right. I will leave you to it for a couple of minutes and uh, give me a wave when you're done. All right. Excellent. Hey, all. Um, so, yeah, like I said, this is called Not Camping. Um, and, yeah, it's set in Australia. And um, I will get into it. All right. Stale beer sweat winning the fight over Cologne and that pull of scotch wrapped around her, familiar and cloying. Hayley Robbins leaned closer as Sasha tried again, raising her voice and squinting her dark brown eyes. You're not going to go camping for your 30th. I thought I had nudged that country bumpkin out of you. I'm going camping, Sash, whether it makes me boring or not. The mediocre skills of tonight's live band covered the faint huff in Hayley's words. I give it until 2 a.m. before you call me and beg me to come back and get you. I'm going for a week and I won't call you. But it's your birthday, Sasha whined, already on her third drink, the sun only now sinking over the horizon. Thursday nights for the new Fridays. Yes, my birthday, mine. And I've taken a week off from the hellhole and I'm spending it the way I want to. 2 a.m., Sasha smirked tossing the last of her drink into her mouth. Standing, she wriggled the empty glass at Haley. Nope, got to be sober to head off early in the morning. Haley finished her first and last drink as Sasha rolled her eyes and headed to the bar. Haley checked her watch every few minutes. 20 minutes had passed and she stood with a little too much enthusiasm. You aren't walking, are you? Sasha narrowed her eyes as ha at Haley over the tan shoulder of the girl with the pixie cut, a work colleague from work from level two, whose pout slurred with her fourth or fifth drink as she swiveled in her chair to face Haley. What, too adventurous for you? No, too bloody stupid. The sun is down. Sasha shot back. Well, the vampires and me are homies, so I'll be right. Haley winked. Message when you get in. Yes, Mum. Haley kissed Sasha's cheek, waved goodbye to the pixie, what the hell her name was, um, and headed home to officially begin her annual leave. Working in a call centre was mind-numbing, but she had met Sasha. When Sasha wasn't ribbing her for living in the past or having her nose stuck in a book, they had fun. 
but in three days she would turn 30. Although her thesis had been written, she hadn't actually finished her degree. Bachelor of Arts majoring in Ancient History. She didn't have a career. Call centre forever. No thank you. No partner. She hadn't even gotten laid in months and no kids. Yish. What an idea. Sasha frowned at the thought. Yeah, that's it. Come on back, Timbo. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I've got that's one thing. I always uh, like um, you know, certain certain accents say certain things better than any other accents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Australian accent says, don't be so bloody stupid better than yeah. <laughs> anybody else on the planet. <laughs> It's just such natural language, isn't it? it just, yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, other people say it different, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I just love it. It's just great. No, brilliant. Excellent. Um, hang on one moment. Oh, I've lost the damn thing. Uh, no, because we've got uh, Callum says, happy birthday. Thanks, Callum. Uh, Chris Hewitt says, happy not belated birthday. <laughs> yeah, I guess Thanks, you're Chris. back to the thing. Back to the uh, time travel thing. Time travel. I love it. Yeah, uh, and I knew I knew I loved Callum. I knew I loved Callum. This man has taste. Hell yeah, <laughs> Trout was the best. He was. <laughs> Jamie Laroche disagrees. He says Tom, obviously. <laughs> I had to do that in my Tom Baker voice, obviously. Absolutely. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, look, don't get me wrong. I know all the old doctors. I just <laughs> when I got to watch the newer ones as they were happening, it's just a different vibe to watching the back. Yeah, I mean, no, I guess, I guess that's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I watch the modern stuff, it's like, it's too fast. It's too, yeah. too fucking, <laughs> where's the fucking story? <laughs> <laughs> just people running around going, ugh, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Come on, that's half the fun, man. You've got to be able to run. <laughs> and, uh, I've got to say, hands down, best pun so far of the evening. So it, it could be beaten, but so far, uh, I assume he's referring to my octopus friend in the hat. Ink Deanna Jones. Callum. Nice. Brilliant. Nice. Excellent. Thank you for that, Neen. Uh, I will take you off and then I will uh, bring you back on shortly. See y'all. Cheers for that. That was brilliant. Right, uh, before we go, uh, I, we hadn't actually decided what order this was going in, but the comments have made me decide. Because uh, uh, Deborah Kappels um, said that, uh, talked about early, said, I look dastardly. And then went on to say, just twirl the end of your moustache for me, please. Now, I would, but I would be outdone by my next guest. Mr. David Bowmore. Bo oh, fuck. Mr. David Bowmore. Sorry, man. <laughs> My brain melted. I don't know how. Bowmore. Now, Bowmore. look at that for a tash. Oh, yes. Yeah. Quality. Yeah, we were actually having a just because I used to have one that did very similar, uh, like came around there. And, um, you yeah, know, we were discussing, <laughs> we were discussing uh, moustache wax. Years of work. Constant training. Oh, God, isn't it just? People don't yeah. understand how, what hard work it is. Yeah. And, and, and then one slip there, when you're shaving. I wear a mask all the time. I don't know why I bother. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you doing then, mate? Well, okay, yes, yes. Trying to write. Yeah, it takes me bleeding years to write a story, so it's just slow work for me. Oh, are you, are you a plotter then? Well, well no, no, actually... What happens, All right. is, what happens is is I see the call, so I saw the call for this one, and I'll I think, well, that could be good. And I thought the idea of the adventure one is fantastic. All the calls, and I know that loads of people and that I know are really into the horror aspect and speculative fiction. Yeah. And I find those so hard. Because I think the worst thing that could happen to anyone is someone else, just some other human being messing with them in some <laughs> grotesque way. And I can't think of werewolves and vampires and stuff and i just i get lost in the kind of and it's just when i read it it sounds rubbish so i, <laughs> I, I, I came down i come down and i sit at the, and i think right adventure story mm -hmm. and I start typing and i see what happens and sometimes it's good and most of the times it's absolutely rubbish and i start again 
and so there you go. And then and then I go away with this rough draft, and then I work on it for about I don't know. It seems like bleeding years to me, and then something <laughs> ends up ready, and I send it off. And most of the time, they're rejected. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You say that, but you're part of the two club. Oh right, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. You've got two in this, in this. Yes, yeah. with myself and uh, and all the other guests as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, it's yeah like, so my, my other one is a uh, Reagan Revolution, and it's a very nice. different story to this one. And it's in the second volume, and it's set on Mars. And I've got the awesome. Queen of Earth invading Mars. And it's all quite Flash Gordon. I've got jetpack um, troopers, and I've got oh, uh, brilliant. Newton, Newton camels, and <laughs> I've got. Uh, t Did you ever play them computer games in the eighties, <laughs> the Revenge of the Mutant Llamas? <laughs> I, I don't remember that one, no. But I probably did uh, play yeah. games in the eighties, yeah. And uh, I don't know, tin, tin, tin pot sheriffs. I mean, real tin, made it a real tin, a real little. Nice. Just, just There's like lots of pew pew. Yeah, yeah, that's Moonraker. <laughs> domes in the middle of Marsh and New oh. South, London, New Paris, or whatever, you know, and so all that sort oh, of thing. brilliant. But it's a very different story to the one that's in here. So what's yeah. this one then? What's it called for a start? Well, this one this one is called Imperial Airways HP thirty six. And nice. Uh, it's set in nineteen thirty six. And I I wanted something that was a bit um I don't know, sort of set in the African kind of desolation or, or jungles or something like that. Something a little bit King Solomon's Mines. But I had to get all these people. That's really funny because that was one of my thoughts on mine. I was like, King Solomon's Mines, I bloody yeah. love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. yours is very much like that. And uh, yeah. But I had to get these people there and I couldn't figure it out. And then I found out about all these aeroplanes that used to exist, Imperial Airways. Um, and they they were pretty much known for being death traps. <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, it's like the Indiana Jones thing, isn't it? With the with the crates full of chickens in the back of them. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And if you see yeah. photographs of the side in Imperial Airways from around that time, basically they're wicker chairs that are screwed to a, a wooden mm. pole, and and then they put propellers on it and they throw it up into the air and hope it lands safely. And that was. <laughs> And then it, and then, it was and then, basically and then, one step from the Wright brothers, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah. yeah. And then, I, and then I also thought, well, I want—I I mean, I'm a big sort of Agatha Christie guy, and I thought, well, I want what I want is actually you're reading the story and everyone dies. It's like, and there were none. That's it. No one lives. But it didn't work out that way. It changed a bit. So, but a lot, of a lot of people die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it comes with the territory, doesn't it? Exactly. <laughs> and all those people you don't like in real life, you know. All those oh, people. mate. Oh, mate, no, I've mate. been slowly working through my oh. shit list for years yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, you can go. <laughs> that particularly nasty one for you, you <laughs> fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, mate. All right, are you going to give us a little uh, flavour? If you, if, you, uh, if you can bear to bear my... Reading, we can go for it. Is that a pince nez? Oh yeah. Awesome. I'm impressed. I, I I've not seen one of them in years. <laughs> a pair of those. Brilliant. Pace and everything it does. Yeah. Oh, superb. <laughs> Excellent, mate. I will leave you to it. Uh, you get, just give me a wave when you're done. I've ordered, I've ordered the book and it hasn't turned up, of course. So I've got I've got my print out. Yeah, that's what I'm moaning about Amazon. Yeah. Isn't it? I think I'm the only one who's got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've, yeah. Got, you've got a hotline somewhere, haven't you? Well, I don't understand it because I'm usually the last, and it's it's really like what well, another anthology I was in. It was like uh, Gemma Paul usually gets them before anybody else, and she only lives like about twenty. I don't know. It's probably more like 50, 60 mile down the road, right? And I have to wait for eternity, but I got mine first, so everybody else has to wait. Uh, it's like karma's on my side for a change. <laughs> We've got an Amazon distribution center over there in over there in Doncaster. <laughs> It'd be honestly quicker to go to the distribution center and collect your stuff. Just go and get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go walk up. Yeah. All right, mate. Give me a shout when you're done. Okay then. Right. Okay. Imperial Airways HP thirty six uh, by me, David Bowman. 
1936, Imperial Airways HP-36 crashed on the lower levels of an African mountain, the well-groomed man said. His suit was of the finest Savile Row material. His white hair, thick, lustrous and a little too long, giving him a slight bohemian air, strikingly at odds with the surroundings of the stiff, formal gentleman's club on Half Moon Street, W1, where he sat in a leather chair, sipping whiskey and soda. They were always falling out of the skies, weren't they? The old buffer said. Indeed they were. I was a passenger on that ill-fated flight. He rubbed a finger along an old scar which ran from jaw to eye. Never! The moustache puffed as he exhaled. That how you got the souvenir, eh? Quite. But I have an account here that tells the story much better than I ever could. Would you like to look it over? What's the catch? Placing a monocle over his left eye, he assessed Bohemian, knowing him to be a shrewd devil. No catch, but I would appreciate it if you'd go about publishing it in the not-so-distant future. Can't make any promises. It all depends on the quality, dear boy. Oh, I think you'll find it's golden. Golden. When the Bohemian smiled, only one side of his mouth lifted. August 25th. From the coffee table, I watched the four propellers of the large silver biplane slowly spinning around. Around me, standing and sitting, are my fellow travellers who will soon board the flying marvel. I count 16 of us, including two pilots and two stewards. Next to me sits my travelling companion, Professor Edgar Smythe, a specialist engineer and a bit of an all-round scientific genius. I have been employed to be a sort of bodyguard to the old fellow, although I have known him for several years and would have taken this trip whether he asked me or not. Gloria Young, a rather glamorous platinum blonde Hollywood actress, dressed in a long mink, chain-smoking and glancing nervously towards the aeroplane, paces back and forth past our table. The scent of Val de Nuit trails after her. Her companion is the smooth and debonair William Blake. I think he ought to shave that dastardly moustache. It does nothing for his character or his cheekbones. Still, he is a movie star and I suppose he is doing something right. Talking to the female attendant is a fellow wearing a bowler hat, but the odd thing about him is the briefcase carried in his left hand. I can see a chain ascending the cuff of his sleeve. This immediately piques one's interest, doesn't it? What the devil is in the case, one asks oneself. The other odd thing is that he is travelling alone. With such an important case in his possession, one would think he would have a companion. The large, matronly woman sits stock still, her tea going cold. Two children, a boy and a girl of about 10 or 11 years of age, are sitting close to her. The girl cannot take her eyes off the movie star. The boy is busy playing with a wooden biplane that intermittently crashes to the carpet before being resurrected and continuing its imaginary journey. A man carrying a Gladstone bag has joined a woman who sits alone. He is tall and thin, well over his six feet. He wears spectacles and looks to my mind to be a medical sort of chap. She is dressed in tweeds, wears a little hat with a pheasant feather in it and looks the sort of woman who would be at home teaching a new girls school. I don't think they know each other. The steward is calling us to board now. A little while ago we formed a queue and ambled through the door murmuring to each other in hushed tones. As we crossed the dusty runway, I noticed William had clasped an arm tight around Gloria's shoulder. The poor girl had, and still is having, a hell of a time. First at the steps to board was an elderly military sort, stiff back, grey bushy moustache, and the superior air of a field general. The female attendant smiled a perfect smile as she welcomed me aboard and directed me to the seat next to a small round porthole of a window. The flight from Cairo to Nairobi is a long one, made longer by having to refuel in Khartoum. It was a cool but clear day, with only a dusting of cloud against an azure sky, as the plane began to gather speed along the runway. The noise inside one of these tin cans does little for conversation, so yet again I was forced to observe my companions and rumble away in my trusty journal. Gloria's knuckles are white from grasping the armrests. The matron type, I suspect a paid nanny, fussed the two children opposite her. The military man stretched his legs and closed his eyes. My friend, Edgar, opened the newspaper at the crossroad. Others produced books. The man in the bowler hat rested his case on his knee 
appeared through the window. We have refueled. An hour of standing in the shade of a lean-to hut while Fez wearing attendance checked the plane and pumped diesel into the tank. Nothing else of note except that I found out the military man is called Powell, Colonel Powell. The children stood with their nanny. I gather their names are Tommy and Linda. A scream woke me with a start, and a rumble of thunder resonated around the, cam the cabin. Everyone fasten your seatbelts, the captain called back calmly. Gloria grabbed William's hands. Looking through the little window, I saw dark clouds rolling and swirling around each other. Sheet lightning surrounded us, accompanied by more thunder. Gloria screamed a scream straight out of the talkies. The plane rocked and suddenly dropped. Thank God for the seat belts, or else we would have been thrown around this tin can. Someone was being sick behind me. The children were crying. A nanny did their best, their, her utmost to calm them with unconvincing, soothing words. And then a streak of lightning lit the sky. I saw it in slow motion, a long, crooked finger reaching towards us and touched our starboard propeller with an almighty spark that blinded me for a few seconds. And when my head cleared and I could finally see again, not only was the propeller on fire, but half the lower wing missing too. We were spiralling out of control. I looked around for some protection, but what can one use against the forces of gravity? The door to the cockpit swung open, and I could see the two men struggling to control our descent. We fell beneath the clouds into rain, and then, miraculously, the captain managed to stop the freefall, and we were at least gliding, albeit in a downward trajectory. Gloria, it appeared, had fallen into a faint, and semi-silence settled over us for all of thirty seconds as some sort of hope landed on our shoulders. Prepare for impact, the captain called. That would be that nice. Nice. <clears throat> I love how I like you had like uh, just some of the things you threw in there, like the, the Gladstone bag and the you know the, the woman in the tweeds with the little hat. It's just I'm instantly it's evocative, isn't it? I'm just I'm it's, instantly it's in the right me so long to write things because I start making these characters up, and especially if they're historical characters who are in the 20th century. Yeah, I like to get things really right, just tiny little things, yes. right, just to, to add a bit to, to them. And I was talking to my wife about this earlier that the back it, you were talking about um, the old films, you like old films. I'm an old mm -hmm. man myself, actually. I, I don't, yeah, know. excellent. Yeah, I like the long man, you know, yeah, 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 Tom Baker, Peter Davison. Nice. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, were, we were talking about, um, uh, uh, oh, crikey, what's the film called? 1974. That's, oh, how can I forget it? Murder on the Orient Express. Murder on the Orient Express. Oh, big, yes. Big nice. Company. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and how the, all the characters are introduced and you get to know them all. Yes. As they're getting on or just before they're getting on the train. And that's the kind of thing I went for with this. I wanted people to know yeah. these we can get to know him a little bit. Well, that's a very that's not just a period kind of feel. It's a period way of writing. Because I mean, that's like like your Agatha Christie. It was very much like that. We start yeah. one with this one, like spiffing. I did exactly the same thing. I did that. I would introduce the characters as the, yeah. you know, and, uh, but that's a very old school way of doing it. Yeah, and well, uh, you instantly <laughs> nail. Yeah, I think I am quite old school actually. For... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm much happier with all these old things. Yeah, me too, to be absolutely honest. Yeah, I, I, well, people, I, I'm a Luddite, to be absolutely honest with you. I'm kind of stuck in a generation gap down there somewhere. Yeah, no, I stopped really taking an interest in the modern world in about 1996, and that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't much longer, than, much, it's, much it's, later than that would be either. <laughs> it's, it's all going too fast for me now. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> As soon as I had the internet, that was it. It was done. <laughs> Brutally, anything else, just sod it. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've got a fan, by the way. Uh, yeah, Deborah. Yeah, with your tash. You know, you're such a cutie. There you go. Uh, <laughs> and this one's even better. <laughs> oh my God! These those glasses gave me a wetty. <laughs> Okay, no, no, yeah. <laughs> 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 
Oh, it's all got a bit wrong somewhere down here. It's like some of these comments, like, like you, Callum, I'm here for the hunky men. And Callum's responding. And we've got an old matron like, up here. And I don't know. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go through them at some point. <laughs> Thanks for that, mate. That was very well done. Very well yeah. read. Yeah, well, well, excellent. I like the way you ended that on that. Brace for impact. Brilliant. Cheers. I'll bring you back on soon. Excellent. Right. Uh, my final guest this evening uh, is originally from West Yorkshire, but she saw the error of her ways, and she now lives the right side of the Pennines in a town just right next door to mine, <laughs> my hometown. Um, she uh, currently lives in uh, currently lives in Stockport. So, uh, we have Charlotte Langtree. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. I'm good, thanks. Uh, I've got to disagree about the correct side of the Pennines, though. Of course you do, because that, that's what we do. <laughs> that's what people from the northwest and people from the northeast do. We bicker about Sounds which good. side's the best. <laughs> but we can all agree <laughs> that we're better than that lot down there, aren't we? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so you've got two stories in this series, haven't you? I do, yeah. Um, yeah. I've got this story in the first volume, and I've got another one in volume three. Excellent, excellent. Are they are they linked or are they totally? They're not. Um, I kind of thought afterwards maybe I should have linked them. That would have been cool. But I had so many different ideas. I could have written more than two. Like I love adventures. <laughs> yeah, I had the same um, thing. I, I had exactly the same problem. Pretty much, I was just like, yeah, that's why I ended up with two because it was. Tell? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it is quite a different, isn't it? It's like what David was saying. It's not like your run-of-the-mill call. I mean, we always get like... Yeah, it's something totally different from anything I'd seen before. And I saw the call and was like, oh, yes. <laughs> mm. I want to be involved with that. Yeah, I was the same. It was like rubbing my hands. Oh, I've got something in my head for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what's your story in this one called then? Um, in this one, it's called Sadie Devro Escape from Romilly Island. Love it. I love it. I love the name. Like, yeah, because we've done that that old school thing, haven't we? We've done the the name of the person and then the, the you know, like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Because you, yeah, I'll mine's very. I, yeah, yeah, you got uh, it. I haven't think you? Of the name in my second one as well in the title. <laughs> oh, excellent! Well, that name, Sadie Devro. That does. That just conjures it up already, doesn't it? <laughs> just like, it just felt <laughs> right. It really did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, excellent. Yeah, so are you going to give us a little bit of a, a bit of a read? I am, yeah. Um, Marvellous. Excuse me yeah. being a bit nervous. This feels far too much like public speaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it does a bit. Does it just, it does, does, just, just to pretend there's nobody there and you just talk at your computer. That's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> To be honest, that's why I'm always like half cut when I do these things because I get a stage fright. <laughs> I'll have a few that's beers not first. Not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Seriously, yeah, literal Dutch courage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, give me a shout when you're done, and uh, I will leave you to it. Okay. Um. Okay. So as I said, this book uh, story is called Sadie Devro Escape from Romilly Island. Brow creasing, Sadie realised she had no idea where she was now, and no idea how to get back to her boat to get off the island. Damn it. At least she was out of that room. Straightening her shoulders, she stepped out onto the grass and made her way down the hill towards a wide patch of trees. Huge shrubs dotted the landscape, and hills rolled like waves into the horizon. With a bit of luck, she'd at least be able to find something to eat. She'd been walking about an hour when the sky turned a dusky pink and she knew she'd have to find shelter for the night. Wandering through dense wood, her boots crunched on twigs and pressed soft leaves into the dirt. Her stomach grumbled. So she foraged along the woodland floor until she found a patch of wild garlic and some strawberries hidden in the shade. She would have preferred to wash them, but they made a nice feast after almost 24 hours on no food. When she stumbled across a small stream, she followed it to its source at the top of a hill and enjoyed, enjoyed a cool drink of water. When something lumbered out of the trees at the bottom of the hill, Sadie blinked and wondered if there'd been something funky with the garlic. The beast looked to be around 12 feet tall. 
It was a drab, grey-green colour, with brighter feathers atop its head and across its long tail. Walking on strong hind legs, its forearms were short and stubby, and its huge jaw opened wide to reveal dozens of razor-sharp teeth. A deep-throated booming sound echoed through the valley as it sniffed and looked up the hill to Sadie. Sadie's mouth gaped open. When the beast began to shuffle up the hill, she jumped to her feet and legged it down the other side towards another section of forest. The back of her throat burned as she forced ragged breaths into her lungs, putting everything she had into running from the creature. Her calf muscles screamed, and a stitch stabbed at her side. Still, she ran. Just inside the tree line, a large hand grabbed her and pulled her down a steep incline into a pool of mud. She writhed against him, fighting to escape, until a familiar voice hissed in her ear. It's me. Be quiet until it's gone. Max? He pressed a finger to her lips, and she lay still, staring into his ice-blue eyes. The wet mud soaked into her clothes until she shivered. An earthy scent filled her nostrils, and her elbows sunk in the mud as Max's weight held her body down. The booming call of the beast hovered along the tree line for several minutes before it faded away as the creature gave up and moved on. Max waited a little longer before climbing to his feet and offering Sadie a hand to help her up. Ignoring him, she stood on her own and looked him up and down. He'd lost weight. The lines of his cheekbones were prominent beneath heavily shadowed eyes. What had been slight stubble on his jaw had now grown into a beard, and a fresh scar marred his forehead. His clothes were covered in mud, like hers. What are you doing here? Max asked. Sadie arched her brow. Looking for you. The lines next to his eyes grew deeper. Sean hired me to find the staff and look for you while I'm here. She looked away. You kind of missed an important event, you know. Max shuffled his feet in the dirt and ran a dirty hand through dirtier hair. I should have been in and out, Sadie. I would have been back in time, but Romilly... Yeah, yeah, he's a crazy son of a bitch. Speaking of, she put her hands on her hips. What the fuck was that thing chasing me? Tell me it wasn't what it looked like. Can't do that, darling. It was exactly what it looked like. You're telling me I just saw a fucking T-Rex on an island in the 21st century? He nodded. Romilly has a lot of unique things here. T-Rex is probably the biggest of them, but he has a host of other dinosaurs roaming the land. He likes to collect rare things. Rare, she sighed. Sure. Dinosaurs aren't rare. They're fucking extinct. <laughs> You would have to bring me in, but get me to cut my cup when I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I had a mild freak out there. I was in the middle of reading, and the biggest spider I've ever seen ran next to my foot. I wonder what happened there, because you sort of went, it was <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were acting. <laughs> was... You can't scream. You're on live. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were acting. You should have just been, oh, yes, yeah, I was acting, <laughs> darling. <laughs> That was great. I'll get some really, like, really cool like uh, Conan Doyle vibes on that. And then, <laughs> like, you know, and then obviously, like, but in the, the 20, the, like the modern day sort of thing. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah, excellent. It was fun to write. Yeah, yeah I think that's the, that's the thing with this. And there's, like, with the adventure stuff. It is just fun Absolutely, to write. Yeah, it's like sometimes yeah. in the horror, like like writing the horror, sometimes it gets quite depressing. <laughs> but, but like uh, this admit, stuff, it was like really it right now because you, you do a lot more. Like, you're more like your uh, fantasy and all that yeah, kind of stuff, definitely. don't you? You write quite a lot of poetry yeah. as well, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um. So yeah. I love writing my poetry, and then with fiction, fantasy is my main genre. But I do like yeah. to try other things as well. Um. Yeah. What, what interests me when I see a, a cool call. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think that's the beauty of it, isn't it? It's just like when you pull up the look through listings or whatever, or something just pops up on your feed and you just go, ooh, excellent. Definitely. And that's, that's precisely what happened yeah. with me with this. Yeah. Me too. It was just like when it came up, it was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I love classic adventures, so it had to be done. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, they had, they had posted this right at the beginning, uh, like after the setting. It was, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Ella Ann says, fantastic beginning. Yeah, and it was. Oh, yeah, really you. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Uh, oh, God. I've just screwed uh, my comments. Things just got mad. <laughs> uh, Michelle River says, great. Uh, yeah, you. Neen says, brilliant. Why is she talking oh. in the comments? I don't understand. <laughs> but I'm not that technological. I don't know how to comment as well as be no, on here. <laughs> to be absolutely honest, I, I try to keep it simple because the times I do try and do anything like complicated like that, I end up like jettisoning all the guests or something. <laughs> ah, like something nice. <laughs> Deborah Group says, very nice. Uh, Holly you. says, loved it, Charlotte. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Cool. Right. I will um I will leave you for a I'll, I'll take you off for a moment and I'll bring you back on in a bit. Sorry, I've got confused because of the comments thing. It's all I think it's gone. I think I've I clicked something and it's gone because I was going in like in a, a descending order. I've clicked something and now it's going in ascending order. And it's like I don't know what I've read or what I haven't. <laughs> Usually my trick. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Okay, I'll speak to you soon. <laughs> right, yeah, and that the that leaves that just leaves me. Um I have two stories in the series. I have one in this and one in volume two. Uh this one is called Eugene Angove and the Quest for the Black Stone. Uh, <laughs> and this will come as no surprise that, that uh, even though it had a big, big word count, I went over that word count and it was going way over that word count. And then David said that they were going to do two volumes. So <laughs> there's a direct sequel to this story in volume two. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that uh, yeah that sorted that one out um cool <clears throat> and um it's probably going to come as no surprise that it has cosmic horror elements um it's kind of what i would describe as if indiana jones was written by pg woodhouse and had a love child with robert e howard his cthulhu mythos stuff then that's probably what this is probably what would come out. Yeah, probably look at well green with tentacles and scales and stuff like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, I will give you a little bit of a reading now. Okay, this is uh, Eugene Angove and the Quest for the Black Stone. March 25th, 1938, the Peruvian rainforest. Cripe, sir, that was juice close, Hampston panted. The fellow nearly took your head off with that shot. Eugene Angove took a sip of brandy from his dented hip flask. Funnily enough, Hampton, I believe that was the intention. I'm just glad that fellow is a worse shot than you are. Hampton rolled his eyes. This is no time for levity, sir. Those scoundrels will be here any minute. Eugene carefully started to reload his revolver. On the contrary, dear boy. If I'm going to be shot down like a blasted animal, I'm going out with brandy in my belly, a smile on my lips, and my buttocks bared at the bounders. With a click, he closed the barrel and peeked out from behind a pile of rubble they were using as cover. Through a temple door, he could see furtive figures with rifles moving in an attack formation. Do you think Sarah... Oh, fucking hell. Sorry, <laughs> stupid pop-up thing. <laughs> Do you think Sarah, Hank and the Professor have found somewhere to hide, sir? I bully well hope so, Hampton. They ran off down that passageway over there. Eugene raised a finger and pointed over to the right of the perfectly square chamber. If they have any sense in that academic noggins of theirs, they will have found a decent hiding place by now. He weighed his revolver in his hand, pursed his lips and thought. Here! After an agonizing minute of silence, he passed the Webley revolver to Hampton. What? Uh, I can't, the terrified ballet babbled. Dig it, Hampton, I have a plan. You need to cover me. Eugene started rummaging in his pockets. But, sir, I can't shoot. You said it yourself. I couldn't hit a barn door. Doesn't matter, 
Eugene grumbled as he continued to search for his recently acquired cigarette lighter. <clears throat> what? Sir, what the dickens do you mean it doesn't matter? Just fire in the direction of the doorman. If they have any sense of self-preservation, it'll keep them away long enough to plant this. With a flourish, he produced a stick of dynamite from his leather satchel. Poor Hampton nearly had a coronary. Where the hell did you get that? Eugene grinned. Remember that construction site we found those bearer chaps at? Valet was aghast. You, you mean you pinched it? I prefer the term requisitioned. But you could say that I pinched it, yes. Now stop gawping like a beached haddock and get ready to shoot. Here they come. Scrambling over onto his knees, Hampton slowly raised his head to peek over the rubble. Pew! A bullet ricocheted off the stone debris, kicking off a plume of dust and narrowly missing Hampton's cranium. Keep your head down, man, Eugene scowled. Just poke the gun over the top and fire blind. You don't have to hit them. Just don't let them into the temple. Here, take this ammunition. Passing him a crumpled box of 0.455 cartridges, the little F cartridges, Eugene noted the blank expression on Hampton's face. Pointy end to the front, old chap. Pointy end to the front. As the first shadowy figure appeared in the doorway, Eugene bellowed, Now! Hampton poked the barrel over the top of the debris and fired. The bullet pinged off the corner of the doorway. The cultist yelped and jumped out of the way. Eugene took advantage of the distraction and raced over to one of the large stone pillars in the centre of the room. As soon as he was safely hidden, two of the attackers poked their guns around the entrance and started firing. The bullets from their Mauser rifles slammed into the stone floor, off the pillars, into the walls, everywhere except their bodies. As their clips emptied, Eugene gave Hampton the nod and the butler poked his gun over and fired two shots. By sheer luck, one of the bullets caught one of the men in the shoulder. The man bellowed obscenities in a deep voice that sounded like custard being sucked down a plug hole and dived away from the aperture. Good shot, Hampton! Eugene chortled as he raced over to the next pillar and took cover. As they waited for a return salvo, a voice cut through the dust and drifting gun smoke. Hold fire! The voice was deep, gravelly with a distinctive American twang. Eugene peeked around the pillar. The sun was shining directly behind a heavy-set man in a trilby hat and a rumpled pinstripe suit, casting his face in shadow. Keep down, he hissed at Hampton. Let's see what this ruffian has to say for himself. Hand the book over and the professor and the rest of you can go free. That's a good one, sir. <laughs> Tell us another one. My sides are splitting, Eugene snorted. He'd been in enough scrapes since leaving the army after the First World War to know a grade A manure when he heard it. You have my word, Mr. Angove. All the order wants is the book and the thieving academic. The rest of you are insignificant. Now hand over the damn book. What's so special about the book? Eugene asked, playing for time as he prepared the fuse on the dynamite. He already knew what they wanted, but he was looking forward to seeing what nonsense the man fed him. It is a holy text, Mr. Angove. My people want it returned. Wouldn't your archbishop want his Bible back if some bastard had stolen it? Eugene sniggered under his breath. <laughs> so, it has nothing to do with the parchment of human skin the professor found in the binding, then. Wrapping his finger around the fuse and pulling sharply, he cut it to a bare minimum. You see, I thought you were after the black stone. Don't play games with me, you asshole, the man raged. Hand over the book or I'll tear you apart with my bare hands. Saying nothing, Eugene caught Hampton's eye and mouthed the word, now. Hampton raised the gun and opened fire. Eugene danced around to the final support pillar. He was now less than a metre from the door. The man in the suit sighed. Very well, I gave you the choice. Take them, boys. As the bullets started flying, Eugene flicked the lighter into life and touched it to the fuse. And I will leave it there. Cool. Yeah, so that's an excerpt of Eugene Angove and the Quest for the Black Stone.
I'm all sweaty now. <laughs> just, I don't know why. <laughs> I blame the humidity. It's got nothing to do with me being out of shape. Okay, so I'll bring back my guests. First of all, Mr. David Green. Oh, hey! hey. <laughs> <laughs> Neem Cohen. Hello! <laughs> Is that what happens when you drink too much coffee? <laughs> oh, wait now, you see. One more. And Charlotte Langtree. There we go. And I don't know why that's being... Ah, right. Excellent. So, questions from the audience. Uh, if you have any questions, people, get them down now. We will go through them. We already have one. I saw oh, it. Yeah, I saw it. That's the one I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> like I say, it all went wonky. I don't know what I did, <laughs> but it's, it's like they're all scattered and they're not in the right place. Nearly finished, buddy. Uh, come on. Ah, here we go. Found it. <laughs> Callum asks, question for the authors at the end. Which of you thought this was out of your comfort zone but wanted to join in? And which of you were just thrilled to see a call like this? Now, I'm probably in the second camp. I, because, I mean, I kind of, I love this sort of stuff. And Because, I, I mean, I, I, I read a lot of all the old, like, the, you know, the Robert E. Howard weird tales and all that kind of thing. And, you know, it was kind of right up my alley. To be, to be absolutely honest, I was just like, oh, this gives me a license to be exceptionally silly. So, <laughs> yes. I, so, I, 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 rather than cosmic horror, I thought it was like cosmic comedy. Um, and in a yeah. good way. In a good yeah. way. And actually, while you're, while, you're reading, while you're reading it, I was thinking, you're, you're actually channeling your inner Rick Mail. Yeah, you know. Yeah, oh, God. Films, you know, yeah, really yeah, 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 yeah. Really good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about Aid Edmondson? You yeah. no, no, no. bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, yeah. Uh, David, I don't know why I'm asking you. Not you, the other one, the beardy <laughs> one up the top. Well, <laughs> David uh, Tash, yeah. David Beard. <laughs> David Beard, yeah. That's actually my real last name. Like, uh, I'm related to the guy from ZZ Top, Frank Beard. The only oh, one without a beard. The only one without a beard, yeah. He was the drummer or drum well, that's, like, that's why they got him. It was like, well, you've not got a beard, but your last name is Beard, so you can be in the group. Right? Genius. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, well, this question doesn't apply to me because I'm not one of the authors. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, it would it would it is probably out of my comfort zone though. If I when I do get across get along to writing the one that I'm I was supposed say, to, you write. are writing in it. So yeah, because I've never written anything uh, like adventure, like pulpy adventure, even though I, I've wanted to. Um, but I suppose like the horror and books are quite are kind of pulpy in 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 their way. Um, in, in, a, in, in that kind oh, of no, very well. I mean, that's what I said to you at the time when I read them. It was a, like a compliment <clears throat> that it reminded me of like your proper hard boiled, like pulp. Yeah. It's these stuff, you know, like you see. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Stuff. Um, yeah. So I suppose so. But like, I mean, I, I'm not going to do uh, I did, my story will be like a detective one or anything like that. I, 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 I've kind of, I kind of want to do um, like a kind of like, uh, I kind of want to do a space one because there wasn't a lot of space ones that we got actually. We didn't get quite a lot of space ones, which was I was, I was a little bit surprised about that. So um, I think I might do a space one for for volume three. There was a few, there's a few in the collection, but I was I, you know I, I love um, I love Star Wars, which is very you know high adventure and um, Flash Gordon and all that kind of stuff, Buck Rogers and everything. So I think what you know, Flash Gordon, Flash Gordon. <laughs> Did you no. ever see? That? <laughs> I, I've heard about Flesh Garden. I, I oh, it's hilarious. Confirm that I've seen Flesh Garden. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My brain. Thanks for putting me on the spot there, Tim. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, man. I am the man who asks the questions. <laughs> okay, over to you, Dean. Um, I was really excited about the call because I love adventure stories, but. It, it was out of my comfort zone. It wasn't anything that I've I've sort of written before. Um, I, I struggled. David can contest to that because I was like, no, I'm not going to get this done. I don't really get it. But it took me a while to kind of find my balance with the story. So I turned it into more of a, um, 
sorry, I have my little man here. Um, I turned it more into a story of um, my my kind of story. So it does get speculative fiction. Just hang on just a sec, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> he's heard me talking, so he's like, yay, I'm coming in. Um, but, yeah, it was a bit out of my comfort zone, but I loved writing it, and I kind of want to write more like it. Good yeah, work, excellent. Buddy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's not a problem. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. So over to you, David. David Tash. <sighs> it, I, I, this was straight, this was right up my strata. really was. Um, it's, it, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm not that comfortable with, with horror and some things. And I mm. think that, the, you know, if you can get to write a story where people are killing each other, uh, and trying to survive <laughs> in, in the wilderness and uh, being killed by other people. And that was quite, because I can think of lots of ways to kill someone. I really can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they say, you know, like a million ways to die, don't they? Like, yeah. No, there's more than that. More than that. Oh, it's garbage. It's garbage. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure I've come up with a couple myself. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite books, poison, How to Poison Someone. But, uh, I can, well, oh yeah, yeah. And, and how they work, the science behind them, love it. And that's just one of my books. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I've got a lot of like that kind of stuff as well. Have you have you ever read um, the uh, the book about the French court, the affair of the poisons? So factual. No. Yeah, oh, it's brilliant. Uh, they, they, I've got a good one about the Borgias as well. <laughs> that, that's an interesting one. <laughs> Lucretia's high dinners. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Charlotte. Um, yeah, I mean, I saw the call and I was just so excited. Um, it's not the usual thing I write, uh, as we said earlier. My main genre is fantasy, um, but I do love adventures. And so when I decided to write for the call, I thought, no, I'm not doing my normal genre. I'm, I'm gonna really go with the adventure theme and go classic um you know thinking indiana jones jurassic park um all the old films that i just love um yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was really fun and this sadie Devereux story wasn't actually the first one that i wrote and um, the one in volume three was the one i wrote first oh, um, right. yeah so that was the first thought and then i was just sort of throwing ideas around and thinking what's really cool and really classic adventure um, and Mysterious I was actually, Island. Yeah. 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 I mean, I was playing with my daughter, and she's mad on dinosaurs. So. Oh man, excellent! <laughs> yeah. What's her favourite? What's her favourite favorite? dinosaur? She does like T Rex. She wants to be one when she grows up. Oh, nice! I've always been a fan of the Ankylosaur. You know, That's my like little man's favourite. Yeah, it's my always my favourite. It's like a tank with a with a big wrecking ball on its tail. It's awesome. <laughs> she does love that one. She, um, we went to a dinosaur event recently, and she got a cuddly toy of an ankylosaurus, and it's oh. just obsessed with it. <laughs> oh, that's amazing! Excellent. I want to. I want a cuddly ankylosaurus. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to Amazon. <laughs> I have got a triceratops and a stegosaurus and a pterodactyl over there. So yeah. That's the collection. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think I need one. I think I need one. Excellent. Uh, let's see. Okay. I saw a question. I've lost it again because it keeps moving. Oh, it's another one from Callum. Uh, did you all have a fairly good idea early on or did you play with a few ideas before delivering what you came up with? Uh, I'm not going to ask <laughs> David. <laughs> He's still throwing ideas around. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> I, think I, have, I think I may have come up with something. For, for, for like, you know, I, I'm not holding up the project or anything. It's it's being edited and stuff. Oh, at the yeah. moment. So it's yeah. fine. There's, there's 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 plenty of time for me to do something. I'm just like tormenting like, you, mate. It's fine. <laughs> I'll just, you know what? No, I'll do is I'll just start working on a drabble and I'll channel my inner Mendes, and then it'll be <laughs> twenty thousand words before the end of the week. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Funny enough, he did. He uh, he actually wrote me a preface, didn't you? <laughs> he wrote me a preface for my short story collection, and you had to put in that story 
about <laughs> Iron Fairy's bloody mic convention. I did because I needed to warn people that I might pick up because it's a short story collection. So you know, it's a short story collection. It's eighty thousand words long. So it was like I needed to like just manage expectations at the start of the book, just to be like, you know, this this is what to expect from Tim. All right. <laughs> I loved it, mate. Thanks. <laughs> right, over to you then, Dean. Um, okay, like like I said earlier, I came up with the setting straight away, but the story took me a while to mm. nut out. Um, I had all these different ideas, and anyone who's actually seen any of my pre-published work, I complicate the shit out of everything. I pull too many <laughs> threads in, and then I go, oh, shit. This is only supposed to be this much? Okay, we'll take some of them out. But um, once I, yeah, so it took me a while to nut down the actual story itself, though the concept, I guess, of her going camping but not camping um, for the for that kind of last hurrah in the 20s was was pretty pretty strong from the beginning. It was just the rest of it I had to figure the hell out. <laughs> yeah. I usually don't worry about that too much. I just start writing <laughs> and see what happens. <laughs> so, yeah. That's how I write. I just start writing and just go. Yeah, I'm yeah. more of a discovery writer myself as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably why my I can't. That's why I can't keep to word counts. Like yeah. seriously, with a gun to my head. Yeah. Because <laughs> they, 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 like the word count on this was like nine thousand words, and I still had to ask for an extension. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all, Tim. Yeah. It'll be a, a, a weird day in hell when, like, you actually stay within a word count. <laughs> I don't think it's ever going to happen, especially now. It's just not – I was better at it when I started, but, oh, terrible. Well, were you? Were you no, really? No, I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't. I'm lying. I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> David with the, the funky moustache. Over to you, Squire. And, well, it was um... – I just like you and sit down and start typing. But I, yeah. I thought that, I'd, you know, see a few little ideas, adventure things coming into my head. And like I said earlier, I just want to see how many people I can kill in it. Um, <laughs> Was that basically your whole criteria with this? Like, big body count. <laughs> it, 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 generally, it generally is. One of the very Let's first try and stories, top Terminator. One of, one of my very first stories <laughs> I had accepted was um, uh, called The Surfer of Death. And uh, uh, but, but but it was again set in the 1930s. But I just I, I just wanted to I picked one person and I decided how many different ways can she die in one evening? And uh, I think I got four or five in there actually. You know she was uh, so yeah. I just sort of, I sit down and I just start typing and that's it. You know that's it. and talking about word count. I was actually talking to David messaging David. About it, I said I've got a story. It's four thousand, four hundred words over, five hundred words over. No, it's well, you know, it could be get, could get. It. And I'm trying to bring it down. And I got it down to under six, to under seven thousand. And then I went through it for the final edit, and of course it's crept back up to seven and a half thousand. <laughs> yes, I've yet yeah, to submit yeah. it. Uh, yeah. You know, ten percent, ten percent is fine. The, the, the thing is, like, with a longer word count, that ten percent becomes. Quite a substantial yeah. amount. Yeah, of the I was happy with that because it was yeah. <laughs> getting good, and I was literally two say, words, oh, two, two words, words under, <laughs> two words <laughs> under ten k on it, like two yeah, words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Tim's like, I can, I can submit a nearly a ten thousand word story. Yeah, now that's that's great. <laughs> I ended yeah, up yeah. doing two two that are two ten thousand word stories because it it basically it was one story that grew sort of almost into a novella. I was just like, right, no, I can stop it. <laughs> just like, right, let's do it as a two-parter. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, over to you then, Charlotte. Um. Yeah. Sorry, I'm mildly distracted because that spider's now camped out under my chair. Um, <laughs> I thought I kept seeing you sort of looking down like, like hello. <laughs> sorry, it's just really big. Oh, I'm sorry, but is it Australia big? I mean, no, it's not Australian. <laughs> right, I'm a wolf with spiders. I just, I just saw your, your eyebrow raised then. It was just like, oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. That is the reason Australian I think about British spiders. 
It's really big. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um oh yeah, that's the question. Um so I had uh, loads of ideas to start with. Um I was speaking to a writer friend. I was like, I just don't know which one to write about. I really want to write something that's kind of World War II, but I also love Western, so I'd love to write something with cowboys in it. And she said to me, why don't you do both? Um, so I put them together. <laughs> and that was my first adventure story. Um, yes, that's how that one came about. And then obviously I told you about um, the dinosaurs for this one. <laughs> yeah. You're still freaked out I by that spider, many aren't more, you? but we're only allowed to do two. <laughs> Deborah says, let's get up and stomp the damn thing. <laughs> we want to see it. <laughs> what you, the hold up a squishy mess. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, don't, don't harm spiders. No, don't. I love spiders. Oh. So, yeah, I love them. I, I, I cultivate them. I, I won't, I'm a goth. <laughs> my, my house is full of cobwebs. <laughs> <laughs> I cultivate, I cultivate spiders. I don't clean my house. Yes, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. That's a really good reason for not. That's my excuse is that I'm I'm allergic to wasp stings, right? And the more spiders, no wasps. <laughs> it's my excuse for not <laughs> dusting. <laughs> I'm not ashamed. <laughs> uh. Chris Hewitt, <laughs> Callum says that Chris Hewitt, writer, asked him to ask this, are there any monorails? Um, David, you have Bobo, there might be one for you and your space what? one, is there any monorails? There, actually, you know what, I think there is, um, yeah, I think there is at least one monorail in the, in the three in the three volumes, at least one. <laughs> Hewitt will be happy. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was, it was actually when I was editing it, I was like, you know what Chris Hewitt would really love if there was just a mention of a monorail. <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah. And they insisted on everyone put a monorail into the story, and they said no. Uh, no, there is there is at least one story of a monorail. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's reaching for the Kleenex right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> What's Sorry. going on? What's, what's going on with this? There's, there's some very, very risque things going on here today. I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm avoiding half of the comment section. It's really funny. It's, it's just like, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> Especially now, yeah, we just got that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know David's what that's in fault. relation to. <laughs> that's David's fault. Is it? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh matron. <laughs> excellent, excellent. <laughs> Actually, I just read a zombie book set in Australia and the amount of references, it's friggin' brilliant, but the amount of references in it about, great, now we have even zombies trying to kill us in Australia. Everything tries to kill us in Australia. Friggin' cracked up laughing was great. Yeah. It, was, it was just like, no, it was Billy Connolly. It was like, oh, I just remember going, yeah, I remember when I first married Parallel, she go, says, come and move to Australia. I was like, yeah, a fucking country where everything tries to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Right, I think um, if anybody, like some last minute questions, if anybody asks a question, get it in now. We're going to start wrapping this up. Okay, so... Tonight, we've been talking about Adventure Awaits Volume 1 specifically and the Adventure Awaits series in general. Uh, if you want to get hold of Adventure Awaits Volume 1, the links are right at the top of the comment thing, so I remember to post it for a change. But here you go. We've got getbook.app forward slash adventure underscore awaits one. That's for the paperback because Amazon are being annoying and they haven't linked the, <laughs> the paperback and the Kindle which is really irritating. So it means we've got two links. So if you want the Kindle, it's mybook.2 forward slash adventure with a capital, awaits with a capital, Kindle with a capital. I can, you can tell which one I made and which one somebody else made. You don't put, don't put capitals in, it confuses it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It needs, to, it needs to have them, I'm afraid. 
It doesn't have to have them. It doesn't need Listen, bloody capitals. Yeah, <laughs> you can see they're extremely important. You're right? reading it out. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, I, just, I may just, have a, some kind leave, of weird OCD with links. I was going to say the same thing. I was going to say, leave my OCD alone, all right? Yeah. <laughs> we have conflicting OCD. I like it. I like it. Uh, yeah, uh, volume two, you can pre-order now. And that's it. It's getbook.app forward slash adventure underscore awaits two. I thought I thought you were taking a piss at my hand gestures there, Neen. You were just rubbing your hand. No, no. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a fisted on, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> that came uh, out yes. so wrong. Yes, it did. It really did. Uh, <laughs> So again, um, like we said right at the top, these uh, the cover artwork was absolutely superb, and um, that was who did it, um, which is Amanda Jan's daughter Bisset. I apologise if I got it wrong. Um, uh, this these three books are through Breaking Rules Publishing Europe, and that's how you find those. Them even <laughs> that's Breaking Rules Publishing Euro dot com. <coughs> And yeah, I think we'll just do one last check on this. So yeah, we had a sort of yeah, great job all, fantastic set of anthologies. Yeah, really is. Yeah, people enjoyed it. Excellent. Oh, very quick question: Indy and the Crystal Skull, thumbs up or thumbs down? I can give you a very quick one on that. <laughs> nope, <laughs> David. Um, I think it's fine if you took Shia LaBeouf out of it, and it's just, it's fine, <laughs> right? You're it, saying that Kate Blanchett's Russian accent? Well, I don't, I don't mind it. I don't, I don't mind that. Accent. I just, I just think like I think <laughs> if you just took like new villain in history. <laughs> I know. It's, I think it's fine. Like if you just took Shia LaBeouf's character out of it and just had the same film without him in it, it'd be way better. I think. I think it's fine without him. It's not as good as the original three, like, but it's fine. Neen. Oh, yeah, thumbs, 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 thumbs up or thumbs down. I'm just gonna do this. I'm just this is yeah, mine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> depends on my mood. No, I'm with David. It's not as good, but it was. Yeah, it was alright. Like Mr. Bobo. It wasn't. It wasn't the same top quality as the first three. No. No. If I was going no. to choose to watch an indie film, I wouldn't choose that one. No, yeah, exactly. well, true. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's uh, kind of superfluous, isn't it? It's yeah, just like yeah. I, I mean, uh, uh, it's, it's Raiders all the way for me. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. Charlotte, yeah. um, I think it's all right if you take it as something separate from the originals. Um, I, love I the think originals. if it was just made as a generic adventure film and not an Indiana Jones film. Yeah. And it's all right. But, but I'm, I'm very much like that with other things as well, like Star Wars, for example. There is only the original three. Like, just that's it. No discussion. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of like the other ones, but but you're right in a way. But yeah. Cool. Yeah, we're all fancy. Yeah. Yeah, fence sitters, there we go. Okay, well, anyway, <laughs> thank you all for joining me tonight. Uh, thank you all at home for listening to us prattling on. Um, there are links underneath if you're watching on YouTube. There are links underneath where you can get hold of the books. Books? The books. <laughs> what was wrong with me tonight? My brain's just gone. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, David Thanks, Green, everyone. thank you very much. Me, thank you. David, thank you. Charlotte, thank you very much. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you all at home. And I'm going to leave you with the overly dramatic video again, uh, just because. Because I spent an entire afternoon arsing around with that. <laughs> <laughs> Excitement. Adventure.
true adventure awaits you within these collected stories of daring do. From impossible feats in foreign lands to sinister portals to other worlds. These stories are steeped in the tradition of the adventure stories of old. Three volumes. Thirty stories. Twenty-five authors. One epic series. Adventure awaits. Volume 1 out now. Volumes 2 and 3 coming soon. Adventure awaits. From Breaking Rules Publishing Europe.